Act Four of the Tragedy of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Act Four, Scene One, Friar Lawrence's Cell. Enter Friar Lawrence and County Paris. Friar, on Thursday, sir. The time is very short. Paris. My father Capulet will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. Friar. You say you do not know the lady's mind. Uneven is the course. I like it not. Paris. Immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore have I little talked of love. For Venus smiles not in a house of tears. Now, sir, her father counts it dangerous that she do give her sorrow so much sway, and in his wisdom hastes our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears, which, too much minded by herself alone, may be put from her by society. Now do you know the reason of this haste? Friar, aside, I would I knew not why it should be slowed. Look, sir, here comes the lady toward my cell. Enter Juliet. Paris. Happily met my lady and my wife. Juliet. That may be, sir, when I may be a wife. Paris. That may be, must be, love, on Thursday next. Juliet. What must be, shall be. Friar. That's a certain text. Paris. Come you to make confession to this father? Juliet. To answer that, I should confess to you. Paris. Do not deny to him that you love me. Juliet. I will confess to you that I love him. Paris. So will ye, I am sure, that you love me. Juliet. If I do so, it will be of more price, being spoke behind your back, than to your face. Paris. Poor soul. Thy face is much abused with tears. Juliet, the tears have got small victory by that, for it was bad enough before their spite. Paris, thou wrongest it more than tears with that report. Juliet, that is no slander, sir, which is a truth, and what I spake, I spake it to my face. Paris, thy face is mine, and thou hast slandered it. Juliet, it may be so, for it is not mine own. Are you at leisure, holy father, now, or shall I come to you at evening mass? Friar, my leisure serves me, pensive daughter. Now, my lord, we must entreat the time alone. Paris, God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early will I rouse ye. Till then, adieu, and keep this holy kiss. Exit. Juliet. Oh, shut the door, and when thou hast done so, come weep with me, past hope, past cure, past help. Friar. Ah, Juliet, I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wits. I hear thou must, and nothing may prorogue it. On Thursday next be married to this county. Juliet. Tell me not, Friar, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. If in thy wisdom thou canst give no help, do thou but call my resolution wise, and with this knife I'll help it presently. God joined my heart in Romeo's, thou our hands, and ere this hand by thee to Romeo's sealed, shall be the label to another deed, or my true heart with treacherous revolt turn to another, this shall slay them both. Therefore, out of thy long-experienced time, give me some present counsel, or behold, twixt my extremes and me, this bloody knife shall play the empire, arbitrating that which the commission of thy years and art could to no issue of true honour bring. Be not so long to speak. I long to die if what thou speakest speak not of remedy. Friar, hold, daughter, I do spy a kind of hope, 
which craves as desperate an execution as that is desperate which we would prevent if rather than to marry county paris thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself then it is likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death to chide away this shame that copst with death himself to scape from it and if thou darest i'll give thee remedy juliet o oh, bid me leap rather than marry paris from off the battlements of yonder tower or walk in thievish ways or bid me lurk where serpents are chain me with roaring bears or shut me nightly in a charnel house or covered quite with dead men's rattling bones with reeky shanks and yellow chapless skulls or bid me go into a new-made grave and hide me with a dead man in his shroud things that to hear them told have made me tremble and i will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love friar hold then go home be merry give consent to marry paris wednesday is to-morrow to-morrow night look that thou lie alone let not the nurse lie with thee in thy chamber take thou this vial being then in bed and this distilled liquor drink thou off when presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humour for no pulse shall keep his native progress but surcease no warmth no breath shall testify thou livest the roses in thy lips and cheeks shall fade to paly ashes thy eyes windows fall like death when he shuts up the day of life each part deprived of supple government shall stiff and stark and cold appear like death and in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death thou shalt continue two and forty hours and then awake as from a pleasant sleep now when the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed there art thou dead then as the manner of our country is in thy best robes uncovered on the bier thou shalt be borne to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the capulets lie in the meantime against thou shalt awake shall romeo by my letters know our drift and hither shall he come and he and i will watch thy waking and that very night shall romeo bear thee hence to mantua and this shall free thee from this present shame if no inconstant toy nor womanish fear abate thy valour in the acting it juliet give me give me oh tell not me of fear friar hold get you gone be strong and prosperous in this resolve i'll send a friar with speed to mantua with my letters to thy lord juliet love give me strength and strength shall help afford farewell dear father exeunt scene two capulet's house enter father capulet mother nurse and serving men two or three capulet so many guests invite as here are writ exit a serving man sirrah go hire me twenty cunning cooks serving man you shall have none ill sir for i'll try if they can lick their fingers capulet how canst thou try them so serving man marry sir tis an ill cook that cannot lick his own fingers therefore he that cannot lick his fingers goes not with me capulet go be gone exit serving man we shall be much unfurnished for this time what is my daughter gone to friar lawrence nurse ay forsooth capulet well be may chance to do some good on her a peevish self-willed harlotry it is enter juliet nurse see where she comes from shrift with merry look capulet how now my headstrong where have you been gadding Juliet, where I have learnt me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your behests, and am enjoined by holy Lawrence to fall prostrate here to beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you. Henceforward I am ever ruled by you. Capulet, send for the county. Go tell him of this. 
I'll have this knot knit up to-morrow morning. Juliet. I met the youthful lord at Lawrence's cell, and gave him what becomed love I might, not stepping o'er the bounds of modesty. Capulet. Why, I am glad on it. This is well. Stand up. This is as it should be. Let me see the county. Ay, Mary, go, I say, and fetch him hither. Now afore God, this reverend holy friar, all our whole city is much bound to him. Juliet. Nurse, will you go with me into my closet to help me sort such needful ornaments as you think fit to furnish me to-morrow? Mother. No, not till Thursday. There is time enough. Capulet. Go, nurse, go with her. We'll to church to-morrow. Exeunt, Juliet and nurse. Mother. We shall be short in our provision. Tis now near night. Capulet. Tush, I will stir about, and all things shall be well. I warrant thee, wife. Go thou to Juliet, help to deck up her. I'll not to bed to-night. Let me alone. I'll play the housewife for this once. What? Ho! They are all forth. Well, I will walk myself to County Paris, to prepare him up against to-morrow. My heart is wondrous light, since this same wayward girl is so reclaimed. Exeunt. Scene 3. Juliet's Chamber. Enter Juliet and Nurse. Juliet. Ay, those attires are best, but gentle nurse, I pray thee leave me to myself to-night for I have need of many orisons to move the heavens, to smile upon my state, which, well thou knowest, is cross and full of sin. Enter Mother. Mother. What? Are you busy, ho? Need you my help? Juliet. No, madam, we have called such necessaries as are behoofful for our state to-morrow. So please you, let me now be left alone, and let the nurse this night sit up with you, for I am sure you have your hands full all in this so sudden business. Mother, good night. Get thee to bed, and rest, for thou hast need. Exeunt, mother and nurse. Juliet. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse, what should she do here? My dismal scene, I needs must act alone. Come, vile, what if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then to-morrow morning? No, no, this shall forbid it. Lie thou there. Lays down a dagger. What if it be a poison which the friar subtly hath ministered to have me dead? lest in this marriage he should be dishonoured, because he married me before to Romeo. I fear it is. And yet, methinks it should not, for he hath still been tried a holy man. I will not entertain so bad a thought. How if, when I am laid into the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo come to redeem me? There's a fearful point. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault, to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in, and there die strangled ere my Romeo comes. Or, if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night, together with the terror of the place, as in a vault, an ancient receptacle, where for this many hundred years the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed, where bloody Tybalt, yet but green in earth, lies festering in his shroud where, as they say, at some hours in the night spirits resort. Alack, alack, is it not like that I, so early waking, what with loathsome smells, and shrieks like mandrakes, torn out of the earth, that living mortals, hearing them, run mad? Oh, if I wake, shall I not be distraught, environed with all these hideous fears, and madly play with my forefathers' joints? and pluck the mangled Tybalt from his shroud, and in this rage, with some great kinsman's bone as with a club, dash out my desperate brains. Oh, look, methinks I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Romeo. 
that did spit his body upon a rapier's point. Stay, Tybalt, stay. Romeo, I come. This do I drink to thee. She drinks and falls upon her bed within the curtains. Scene 4. Capulet's House. Enter Lady of the House and Nurse. Lady. Hold, take these keys and fetch more spices, nurse. Nurse. They call for dates and quinces in the pastry. Enter old Capulet. Capulet. Come, stir, stir, stir. The second cock hath crowed. The curfew bell hath rung. Tis three o'clock. Look to the baked meats. Good Angelica, spare not for cost. Nurse. Go, you cot queen, go. Get you to bed. Faith, you'll be sick to-morrow, for this night's watching. Capulet. No, not a whit. What? I have watched ere now all night for lesser cause, and ne'er been sick. Lady. Ay, you have been a mouse-hunt in your time. But I will watch you from such watching now. Exeunt lady and nurse. Capulet. A jealous hood. A jealous hood. Enter three or four fellows with spits and logs and baskets. What is there? Now, fellow. Fellow. Things for the cook, sir, but I know not what. Capulet. Make haste, make haste. Exit, fellow. Sirrah, fetch drier logs. Call Peter, he will show thee where they are. Fellow. I have a head, sir, that will find out logs and never trouble Peter for the matter. Capulet. Mass, and well said, a merry horson, ha! Thou shalt be loggerhead. Exit fellow. Good faith, tis day. The county will be here with music straight. For so he said he would. Play music. I hear him near. Nurse, wife, what, ho, what nurse, I say? Enter nurse. Go waken Juliet, go and trim her up. I'll go and chat with Paris. He, make haste, make haste, the bridegroom, he is come already. Make haste, I say. Exeunt. Scene five. Juliet's chamber. Enter nurse. Nurse. Mistress. What, mistress? Juliet, fast. I warrant her. She. Why, lamb? Why, lady? Fee, you slug a bed. Why? Love. I say, madam, sweetheart. Why, bride? What, not a word? You take your pennyworths now. Sleep for a week. For the next night, I warrant, the county Paris hath set up his rest, that you shall rest but little. God forgive me. Merry and amen. How sound is she asleep? I needs must wake her. Madam, madam, madam. Ay, let the county take you in your bed. He'll fright you up, if faith. Will it not be? Draws aside the curtains. What? Dressed? And in your clothes and down again? I must needs wake you. Lady! 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 Alas! Alas! Help! Help! My lady's dead! Oh, were a day that ever I was born! Some aqua vitae! Oh! My lord! My lady! Enter mother. Mother. What noise is here? Nurse, oh, lamentable day. Mother, what is the matter? Nurse, look, look, oh, heavy day. Mother, oh, me, oh, me, my child, my only life. Revive, look up, or I will die with thee. Help, help, call help. Enter father. Father, for shame, bring Juliet forth. Her lord is come. Nurse, She's dead, deceased, she's dead. Alack the day. Mother. Alack the day, she's dead, she's dead, she's dead. Capulet. Ha, let me see her. How to, alas, she's cold. Her blood is settled, and her joints are stiff. Life and these lips have long been separated. Death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the field. Nurse, O oh, lamentable day. Mother, O oh, woeful time. Capulet, 
death that hath taken her hence to make me wail ties of my tongue and will not let me speak enter friar lawrence and the county paris with musicians friar come is the bride ready to go to church capulet ready to go but never to return o son the night before thy wedding day hath death lain with thy wife see there she lies flower as she was deflowered by him death is my son-in-law death is my heir my daughter he hath wedded i will die and leave him all life living all is death's paris have i thought long to see this morning's face and doth it give me such a sight as this mother a cursed unhappy wretched hateful day most miserable hour that e'er time saw in lasting labour of his pilgrimage but one poor one one poor and loving child but one thing to rejoice and solace it and cruel death hath catched it from my sight nurse oh woe oh woeful 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 day most lamentable day most woeful day that ever ever i did yet behold o oh day o oh day o oh day o oh hateful day never was seen so black a day as this o oh woeful day o oh woeful day paris beguiled divorced wronged spited slain most detestable death by thee beguiled by cruel cruel thee quite overthrown o oh love o oh life not life but love in death capulet despised distressed hated martyred killed uncomfortable time why camest thou now to murder murder our solemnity o oh child o oh child my soul and not my child dead art thou dead alack my child is dead and with my child my joys are buried friar peace ho oh, for shame confusion's cure lives not in these confusions heaven and yourself had part in this fair maid now heaven hath all and all the better is it for the maid your part in her you could not keep from death but heaven keeps his part in eternal life the most you sought was her promotion for twas your heaven she should be advanced, and weep ye now, seeing she is advanced, above the clouds, as high as heaven itself. Oh, in this love, you love your child so ill that you run mad, seeing that she is well. She's not well married that lives married long, but she's best married that dies married young. Dry up your tears, and stick your rosemary on this fair course and as the custom is in all her best array bear her to church for though fond nature bids us all lament yet nature's tears are reason's merriment capulet all things that we ordained festival turn from their office to black funeral our instruments to melancholy bells our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast our solemn hymns to sullen dirges change our bridal flowers serve for a buried course and all things change them to the contrary friar sir go you in and madam go with him and go sir paris every one prepare to follow this fair course unto her grave the heavens do lower upon you for some ill move them no more by crossing their high will exeunt manent musicians and nurse first musician faith we may put up our pipes and be gone nurse honest good fellows ah put up put up for well you know this is a pitiful case exit first musician ay by my troth the case may be amended enter peter peter musicians o oh, musicians heart's ease heart's ease oh and you will have me live play heart's ease first musician why heart's ease peter oh musicians because my heart itself plays my heart is full of woe 
Oh, play me some merry dump to comfort me. First musician. Not a dump we. Tis no time to play now. Peter. You will not then? First musician. No. Peter. I will then give it you soundly. First musician. What will you give us? Peter. No money, on my faith, but the gleek. I will give you the minstrel. First musician. Then will I give you the serving creature. Peter. Then will I lay the serving creature's dagger on your pate. I will carry no crotchets. I'll ray you. I'll thaw you. Do you note me? First musician. And you ray us and thaw us. You note us. Second musician. Pray you put up your dagger and put out your wit. Peter. Then have at you with my wit. I will dry beat you with an iron wit and put up my iron dagger. Answer me like men. When griping grief the heart doth wound and doleful dumps the mind oppress, then music with her silver sound. Why silver sound? Why music with her silver sound? What say you, Simon Catling? First musician. Mary, sir, because silver hath a sweet sound. Peter. Pretty. What say you, Hugh Rebick? Second musician. I say silver sound because musicians sound for silver. Peter. Pretty, too. What say you, James Sound Post? Third musician. Faith, I know not what to say. Peter, oh, I cry you mercy. You are the singer. I will say for you, it is music with her silver sound, because musicians have no gold for sounding. Then music with her silver sound, with speedy help, doth lend redress. Exit. First musician. What a pestilent knave is this same? Second musician. Hang him, Jack. Come. Will in here, tarry for the mourners, and stay dinner. Exeunt. End of Act 4